That means shut up. Right! Order in court, order in court. Hello there, welcome to VR Court. Judge Ekron sitting to hear the crimes against Mr. Moltres. Mr. Moltres is accused of burning down a barn which had 16 cows in it. Mr. Moltres, you are accused of quite this serious crime. How do you plea? Well, I was trying to do my job, but I didn't actually burn down the, the cow. Mr. Moltres, yes. you're supposed to plead innocent wrong. or guilty and not say anything in relation to your case oh. until evidence has been done and lawyers oh, have spoken right, to people. Right. Uh, A plea of innocent or guilty, not please, Mr. Moltres. Innocent. Yes. Very sure. well. In that case, then, a plea of innocent has been entered by the accused, so we shall be moving to a bench trial. We do not have uh, a jury because we don't have enough people to do a jury, unfortunately. So I will be acting as the jury, the judge, and the executioner if required. On the prosecution stand, we have Mr. Sprett as the lead prosecutor and Mr. Tory as the backup prosecutor as he is leading. And on the defense stand, we have Miss Bree, or I'm, uh, I'm going to refer to you as Miss Plays. Miss Plays on the defense stand. I am aware that oh Mr. Gosh. Sprett is a very experienced lawyer, and so is Mr. Tory. They're both very experienced. Uh, Miss Plays, have you done any lawyering before, or is this your first proper case? You can be honest. This is my first proper case. First proper case. Well, as Mr. Tory has spread... Now, I love to see new lawyers spreading their wings, and I can assure you I will be as fair and guiding to you as I possibly can be. So what's going to happen at this point is that the lawyers are going to go into the back room to sort out their evidence. Very well. Well, in that case, then, I am done talking. Am I going to lend the floor to Mr. Sprett and Mr. Tory? Why, why are you broken again? Mr. Sprett and Mr. Tory to present their opening cases as they see fit. Uh, yeah, opening statements, rather. I apologise. I haven't done this for, like, two months. So, Mr. Sprett, Mr. Tory, if you could please make your opening statements to the court, we'd vastly appreciate that. Take the floor. Yes. <laughs> your Honour... This man here is famous for before. Hello, is it true that you are in a video game, Motor? Mr. Tory, now is not the time I to be asking questions. This is your opening statement. Oh, yeah. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Two months. Two months. Yeah, that's, right. Thank you. <laughs> that's fine. Well, we have evidence <laughs> that this man here, Mr. Motors, have uh, sort an arson of a bomb which killed many people and also a character from the same game as Miss this uh, accused is from called Liam Kennedy. We have evidence and believe that this man has not only killed the cows but the uh, Liam Kennedy in this fire. We have evidence and DNA from the scene that would show that our case will be wrong. Uh, that's it I guess for now. Okay, thank you, Mr. Tory, for that opening statement. You may sit down and don't kiss me. I will slap you. Right, that was the prosecution's <laughs> opening statement. Miss Plays, I'm going to lend the floor to you now to make your opening statement, if you'd be so kind. Sad. All right, so, again, my client is being framed for burning down a barn, and he's stating that he has been framed, and I have evidence to prove that, as you can see in the back room. And, uh, I guess that's all I have to say. Okay, then. Thank you very much, Miss Plays, if you'd be kind enough to sit down. So, the opening statements of the prosecution and the defence have been given to us, and I'm rather looking forward to this case. On the defence's side, we appear to have some kind of framing job, which I'm looking quite forward to. And on the prosecution <coughs> side, we appear to have a guilty by association to previous crimes and possible other deaths. So, for those of us who have just joined, and the members who I forgot to mention, the accused is accused of burning down a barn with 16 cows inside, just so you're aware. But... And that's the only time I'm going to reiterate. So, we're now going to move on to the full and frank case of the prosecution, led by Mr. Sprett and Mr. Tory. So, Mr. Sprett, Mr. Tory, I'm lending you the floor to make your full and frank case using all of the evidence laid against you. Miss Plays, you may object as you see fit. I will also allow the, the, defend, the prosecution in their case to just ask the accused questions. Just if it makes it easy. If you want to ask him a question, just ask him a question. The defence will be given the same property as well. So, prosecution, the floor, go piss on it or something. I mean, present your case. They're both the same thing as far as I care. <laughs> yes. Yes, well, we can start. Uh, Mr. Is it true that you are in a video game? 
Podium number one, is it, Mr. Tory? Uh, yeah, wasn't it? I think it was number one. Yeah, I believe I get... Is that, is that the correct piece of evidence? Oh, uh, <laughs> yes. What? That <laughs> is completely... <laughs> Miss Plays, if you have is anything to say... Is that a waifu pillow? Miss Plays, yeah. if you have anything to say directly, please do object. We try not to interrupt the oh, players. Oh, It's totally acceptable, just to let you know. Uh, carry on, Mr. Tory, carry on, Mr. Spratt. As we all know, that Mr. Kennedy from the series was uh, uh, the latest one. You always had all the ladies around Mr. Little Frank. Black hair, Miss Cat, I would call her, because you might not see it in the photo, but she had cat hair. So he's a cat girl. I don't know what they call them, the E girls or cat girls. Uh, and again, you can see the roles that will represent the love that Kennedy showed for her. And like they used to be, they used to, he like, used to come over to her, and she lived at the bar. I, I, I mean, at the farm, not the bar, but at the farm. And, and, and what we mean is that she is also, yeah, she is in the background, like the, one of the secret characters in, in Resident Evil, that Mr. Mozart was extremely loved and jealous of Mr. Kennedy. We can have the next, the next evidence. Do on the screen. Yes. Do you want to take this one? Yes, go. As you can see in our second uh, picture of of, of, of of the evidence, this is the lighter that was used by Mr. X uh, to burn down the barn with the cows. In and and we found his uh, and we find found his home on this which have a lot of uh, which which contain a lot of text messenger to this cat girl which which mean uh, Mr. X was a stalker of this girl. Go ahead with your objection, Miss Plays. Okay, first of all, I'm going to do one thing. Uh, microphone again, Miss Plays. Microphone again. Your... Okay. How is Tori doing? I'm going to have to mute him. <laughs> microphone? Right. How are we doing? So... Microphone? Microphone's a little dodgy, Miss Plays. Not to be rude, it's just easier to understand you when it's not inside a glass. My phone's kind of backing up against me. That's okay. We can carry on as it is. I'm sure we can understand you if you're just slow and clear. Carry on as you see fit. Alright, so um, I just want to say one thing. That phone on the screen, it's cracked. I can see the cracks very clearly. And secondly, from what my client just told me, he never had a phone on him. His phone was, was placed down on the table. Mr. Sprett, your counter to these objections, mostly focused on objection number one, I think is the important one. Well, this is his phone. It's, the screen is cracked, it is correct, but it doesn't mean the phone doesn't work. Everybody can have a crack in the screen. Okie dokie, I'm... Uh, just for relevance, I'm thinking of a number between one and ten. Mr. Sprett, what number am I thinking of? Four. <laughs> Miss Plays, what number am I thinking of? Nine. Nine. Okay. Carry on with your case, Mr. Sprett. I'm just going to go through my data banks for a bit. Uh, as we told you, um, Mr. Xer was a stalker of this cat girl. And what was hap and what happened with this uh, bar file was 
was uh, Mr. Exler was talking. Or... Uh... Sorry. Mr. Exler wanted the cat girl for himself, so he, so he decided to kill Leo. As we know, he has been trying. He has been trying multiple times. But in this this case, he followed. He followed or, you know, Mr. Lian to this barn, which he decided to set on fire, trying to kill Mr. Lian. Uh, if you can put on the next evidence. I can do. Has Mr. Tory returned and stopped destroying his kitchen? Yes. You can take I this. Can. What? As you can see here at the picture, we can start here with that. You, here you can see the police uh, department uh, picture we found of Mr. Lee Kennedy. His gun, his knife from the game, and here we have some meat from the cows on the pizza. Yes. We also have a picture here, you can see, of Mr. Kennedy. First you can see here, Mr. Kennedy is, uh, he's become a uh, skeleton. And he was died, killed in a fire, but everything was burned, except the skeleton left. You can see here, the one in the black is the, a police uh, officer, who is getting the uh, uh, cow meat from Mr. Kennedy. And the last picture in the pink hair, you can see the eagle he was together with, with the people, the cat girl. They were, they were together with on the sea. You can see her hair, all traumatized. You can't even look at the camera. Oh my god. Suspension of disbelief. Bowie? Okay. Yes, this is horrible. <laughs> so not even, not just the cows. That's all for Kennedy. So 17 lives has been lost because of your jealousy. I will, not, I will not do such thing. Besides, I want to be tired. And he is talking. <laughs> he has a month of a time. How old are you? That's what I always say. Much older than he is. Very much older. That's it. Objection, Your Honor. Go objection. ahead with your objection, Miss Plays. Okay, first of all, your story. I'm sorry. <clears throat> um, first of all, your story is false because, from what my client told me, he never had a crush on anybody, and from what I heard, there was no one in the barn. So how could he have burned 16 cows and that person that was in the barn? Because he told me that there was no one in the barn specifically. We have. Okay, first off, we have the evidence. And for that second off, if he's not there, how does he know that there wasn't people in the bar? Well, first of all, first of all... Ask me the question, ask me the question, so... If he wasn't there, if he didn't kill anyone, if he wasn't there, how did he know there wasn't people in the bar? Well, because, um, maybe his boss yes. probably told him that he would be working alone. But what does that have to borrow with? That is... Private bar, owned by the What does that have to do with the Well, from what I gather, he told me that he was doing doing work at the bar, so he had business being there. Okay. I am going to interrupt this objection train because I feel that no more good can be acquired from this particular line of objection. Um, i just let you know, the data banks came back and the mobile telephone presented in slide number two does indeed belong to the client and contains a long series of texts belonging to the accused. The number was three, so it was nearly a complete critical victory, but not quite. Just enough to prove that what they said was true. So the mobile phone in evidence number two did belong to Mr. Ultras and he has been in contact with the cat girl. Not necessarily full on stalker, you'd have to have got two for that. Mr. Tory, what are you doing over here? I have to go, I have to go now. Very well, thank you for your time, Mr. Tory. We vastly appreciate it. I'll catch you around, my friend. Right, yeah, just so the court is aware, the defence lawyer, Mr. Tory, will be departing now to go and do uh, Norwegian things, probably something to do with the Ford. So, Mr. Sprett will be taking over the case on his own. Mr. Sprett, if you would be kind enough to carry on. Last piece of evidence? Ah, uh, yeah. We put the number four. 
As you can see, we also find uh, item lost by, uh, by Mr. Xer. As you can see, he lost his hat on, 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 on this crime scene. And this banana he was using as a butt plug fell off, which we can find his DNA on it. You found his DNA on it? We found his DNA on his butt plug that fell off. Yeah. Okay, so you know, um, let me go and get the fingerprint slash DNA scanner for that, and we'll tap that one for the test. Mr. Spread, a momentary recess whilst I pop into the back room, ladies and gentlemen. Don't catch fire, it's bad for you. Okie dokie. Now, if you don't know what this device is, this is a fingerprint slash DNA scanner that we have in the courtroom. It requires very, very specific uh, programming to do, but we've taken the sample of DNA found on the banana. It was rather brown and horrific with some skin cells. I'm just going to program the um, device for that data. It's very delicate, so you have to do it right. Right, if you would be kind enough now to push your finger against that button. Push your finger against that button. It oh. is a fingerprint match oh. indicating that the DNA of that Mr. Moltres was DNA found on the like banana. I probably had the DNA scan. <laughs> mm. So that's an Don't interesting worry. feature which does imply that Mr. Moltres was there at the scene. Although by the sounds of what the defense has said in their objections, that may not be the biggest problem in the world. Uh, Mr. Sprett, do you have any more of your case to present? No, that was all our evidence. Very well. In that case, then, we shall bring the prosecution's case to a draw and a close and everything else. And a very interesting case for certain. I rather enjoyed some of the details there. Um, you were correct about certain things that went in your favour, that last one. And it does leave the defence in a bit of a tricky position. However, I am looking forward to hearing the new lawyer speak their piece about their client. It should be a good case. And to be fair, having heard what they said during their objections, I believe they may have a few get-out-of-jail cards going here. So... Thank you, Mr. Spreth and the prosecution. Miss Plays, I am now going to lend the floor over to the defence to make their full and frank case. When you're ready for a piece of evidence to be called up, please just tell me the podium number. You have five to eight. And we'll go from that okay, point. Um... Mr. Spreth, you may object as you see fit. Miss Plays, you may ask your client questions during this time as you see fit. All right. <clears throat> All right. So... From what you told me in the back room, you said that you were alone doing the job, right? All right. Right. Okay. And there was no one but you in the barn, correct? Right. Yes. No one but me. Okay. Okay. And um, from what I'm gathering, uh, he's saying that you used to stalk this woman. Is is that is that true or false? That is completely false. I would not do such a thing. Okay, well, um. Uh, uh, I go. Will... One moment, Miss Plays. Go ahead with your objection, Mr. Spread. Hmm? Uh, I just want to ask what was he doing in the barn in the first place? The barn that belonged to this cat girl that he was. Okay. At the job. Well, first of all, well, first, of all, he was probably uh, doing work in there, correct? Because you were hired there. Correct. Yes. Yes. Could you elaborate on the work? I'm curious as a judge, as I feel the question was not adequately mm. answered. Yes. Could you elaborate on the work? What work were you doing? At the bar, you mean? Um. Yeah. Well, I usually do do a bartending, clean, clean the, the drinks. So I'm going to the janitor. That's sorts. That's not, that, that pretty much it. It doesn't be a janitor at the bar. Janitor, janitor at the barn. I've never heard of a janitor at the barn. I've ever heard of a janitor at school and at a hospital, never at a barn. Are you sure? You sure? Yeah, we'll take that as a general handyman. I think is probably what he means. He seems to be a bit uh, yeah, yeah. in the brain from fire. Yeah. Very well. Thank you for your objection, Mr. Sprett. You may carry on with your case, Miss Plays. Okay, I would like to call on some evidence. Certainly. Which number would you like, my dear? Eight. Number eight. Very well. There you go. Okay, as you can see, the evidence I have is this tablet, right? The tablet contains pictures of of him, obviously, and 
before he went to the barn, as you can see, he went to the, uh, the courtroom first. Why were you at, at, at the courtroom, ex exactly? Well, it's a long, complicated uh, story, but it's not, not, not bad, I was not related to that. It's just, um, it's just what to him, my old, older case, the, um, the, the okay. that famous. Okay, it's and as you can see on, all right, and as you can see on the left side, you see that there's um a blue tape re recorder. Your Honor, I have suspected, I've suspected that blue tape recorder has something to do with him and the uh person he was so-called stalking audio recording of their breakup. Breakup, you say. Yes, they break up because, from what I gathered, they used to go out, correct? Correct. All right. And from. Uh, it's fine, I've lifted my headset. Are you okay, up. Your I've Honor? Lifted, I've lifted my headset up to clean my visor and get my coin ready. Please do carry on. Don't, don't, mo don't worry about what I'm doing. I can, I can stare at my PC screen. Please carry on. <clears throat> okay, and from what I gathered, um, that Bluetooth recorder has suspected to be the audio recording of their breakup. So, exactly what was your breakup about? Like, uh, did, did you cheat? Was there, like, a thing going on? What happened? It was, uh, cheated. I was cheating on her. Who did you cheat on her with? Mm, another, another one, basically. Another one. So that, was a, mm. that was a long time ago. I'm mm. a cheat fan. And I played the tape recording back, and she, and she yelled at you to never see, to never speak to her again. Correct? Correct. That's correct. All right. Uh, Miss Plays, just before you carry on, heads or tails, my dear. Wait. Say it again. Heads or tails. I've dropped it. Uh. Tails. Tails! Okie dokie! Well, please do carry on. The coin toss has been done. Carry on, my dear. <clears throat> Alright then. And from the top hand of the corner, you see that there's um that there's a torch underneath the tablet. And from what I gathered. And when I gathered them, that torch has someone else's handprints on it, not his. I don't know whose handprints they are, but um, you said it was uh, in front of yours, correct? That's correct. Yes. So maybe your friend wanted to set you up. Make you yes. make people think that make people think that you burned down the barn and and not them. What? All right, Your Honor, I rest my case. Is that the entirety of your case, Miss Plays? Yes. Very well, a short and concise uh, case with some witness questioning and um, evidence presented in full. That's quite interesting, but that's not a problem if you only wish to use one podium. I will not force you to use multiple podiums. Thank you very much, Plays Plays. You may sit down. So, interesting cases presented by both the uh, defence and the prosecution. Thank you for that, lawyers. I rather enjoyed listening to those cases. Quite a long one on the prosecution side, nothing wrong with that, and short and sweet on the uh, defence's side. Now, um, I have just played back the tape in my head at a 19 times speed so I've listened to all of it and can confirm that what the defence lawyer is saying about the tape is true it is a tape in relation to a breakup between the cat girl and Mr Moltres and her shouting at him about him being a cheating whore you stupid bastard I hate you your penis is flamey and ashy this is horrible never come near me again you cheating bastard if you come near me I'll burn you down is the most entertaining part of the transcript. I'll save you the, uh, the sexting that happened beforehand, how they did it over the telephone, I just don't know. But as we've done that, I'm going to ask Mr. Sprett, do you want to have any form of witness questioning since we have allowed the witness to be questioned during the case, or shall we just carry on to amendments and draw it to a close? 
we only have the accused as a witness. Uh, I don't need to question him, but if he wants to question him, I can go after him. Miss Plays, would you like to claw your trying to the stand to do any kind of witness questioning, or are you happy just to carry on without that? Up to you entirely. No pressure. I think I'm happy to carry on without that. Very good. I must admit, I do think Hold that... On, can I ask some question? Uh, what, to the accused? Yes. I will allow it, just because... I, why not? Go, go ahead, Mr. Sprett. I'll allow you to ask a question. I will, however, say that the accused is allowed to refuse to answer this question since the case presentation has ended. So if you don't want to answer, Mr. Moltres, you are not obliged to do so. Mr. Sprett, go ahead with your question. Alright. Mr. X, you said you were cheating, right? Yes, Brett. Who can you say who you were cheating with? Is it a man? Girl? Do you have a name? Girl. I'm just interesting. Yeah. This there is one particular. That's how I could know. Is uh What is this? Okay, it's okay. When does this breakup happen? About last month ago. Yeah. Last month. A month ago? A, a month ago. It'd be list. Alright. She was the one that broke up, right? I think so, yes. Yes, that's correct. Okay, so which means that you she was the one that broke up. You were, you probably didn't want to break up. You had feelings for her, according to you guys. Which I guess, I guess would make you really jealous when she was meeting Leo. Mr. Sprett, you're going a little far for a single question outside of actual witness questioning. Although I understand the point you're bringing up and it has crossed my mind already. If you wish to carry on questioning and we'll have to swear him in as a witness. I think we all know where this goes. I, I must admit, the thought had crossed my mind beforehand, but uh, I reserve no judgment until the time of going. Uh, Miss Play, since we gave Sprat the opportunity to ask the accused any questions, a couple of questions without witnessing uh, reading in the bullshit, would you like to ask him anything or uh, do you wish to carry on? Just Yes, you? I have a couple of questions. I will allow it without witness swearing in three questions just because otherwise we have to swear them in and then I get to take the piss out of them and uh, witness questioning. Go ahead, Miss Plays. Alright, so if you had, if you still have feelings for her, why did you, why did you still cheat on her? Yeah, because it's a complicated relationship. It's hard to keep practicing time. Okay, okay. Okay, I, I understand. I, I'm in a relationship myself. And, um... So, you said that... Sh that both of them are girls, correct? That's correct. Alright. And, um... Was... Was your ex-girlfriend ever like mean to you like to make you cheat on her yes it was very mean very hatred oh my um what what hatred did she do like like um domestic violence was what what did she do more like domestic violence mm -hmm. okie dokie miss plays just... if you wish to ask any more questions we're going to have to swear the witness in up to you all right no, um, I rest in my case. Very well, then. Well, a very quick and amended uh, witness questioning, then. I'm going to work on that whole witness questioning during cases, because I think it works better to bring this in as we go along. I actually prefer it. Has Mr. Sprett crashed? No, he's still there. Very good. I thought you crashed, Mr. Uh -huh. Sprett. You were feeling Anyway. Enjoying the background show. 
Yeah, fair enough. Thank you for your cases, <laughs> lawyers. Very interesting cases as presented. And thank you, Mr. Hughes, for answering questions fairly and frankly. So, interesting cases as presented. I believe I've got enough of an idea of what's going on. We are now going to move on to amendments. As I mentioned, amendments are just any changes to your case you'd like to present based on new evidence. So, I will ask the prosecution first. Mr. Sprett, are there any amendments that you wish to make to your case as you have presented it? Uh, no. Very good. Miss Plays, are there any amendments you'd like to make to your case as you have presented it? No, no, there are no amendments. Very well, one in that case then. There's no need for amendments and that's just the way I like it because amendments are boring. Right, we shall move on to the last facet of court for the lawyers to be taking part in, which are your closing statements. Closing statements, much like opening statements, are summaries of your case as you have presented it and you may refer to your evidence, although you can't bring it up on the screen. Short and concise, minute, minute and a half max. Whatever. Don't be a dick. Mr. Sprett, I'm going to allow you to make your closing statement first, as you've made the first of everything in this case. And Mr. Sprett, the floor for the last time in this beautiful case belongs to you. Don't piss on it like Tory did. <laughs> I will try my best. Okay. <laughs> this case was about Mr. Exer being... His girlfriend broke up with him. He got mad. Catgirl was dating Leon. Mr. X followed Leon to the bar, to the barn, set that fire on the barn, killing all the cows, including Leon, which we have evidence on, with DNA and old picture of the corpse of Leon and the cows. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Okay, thank you for your closing ta statement, Mr. Sprett. And for the last time, Miss Plays, would you mind taking the floor to present your closing statement to the fish? So, yeah. uh, okay. <clears throat> anyway, so, you were at work at the barn. There was a fire. You broke up with, with a girlfriend. Correct? And, um... Yes. And so, so someone tried to frame you, but you don't know if that was your old friend or, or not. That's, that's true. Your Honor, that is all I have to say. Okay, thank you, Miss Plays. You may take a seat and a big thanks to the lawyers in this case for all that they have presented. A case I've genuinely enjoyed. I must give credit to Miss Plays for her first case. She's played it very well. And Mr. Sprett once again has given us a stellar performance on how to be a lawyer with Tory being Tory. So, fantastic. We're now going to move on to the judge's summary, which is where I talk about the case as it has been presented to me, and what I understand of it, how I've interpreted it, and all that BS. I will politely request the lawyers do not interrupt me whilst I'm speaking, although I may ask them to clarify details. So, as per the normal, we are going to start, once I get this in the right place, with the prosecution's case, since we started there. That's really not in the right place, oh my good. Oh my god, it's like I'm drunk or something. So we started on the first piece of evidence, which was bringing into the equation the mysterious cat girl, who is a secret character in the uh, Resident Evil series, apparently, and how Mr. the accused was basically infatuated with her, something which has technically been proven by both the prosecution and the defence by proving that he was in a relationship to a point where he became a fanatical stalker. So the implementation of her as a target of him and his relationship. The next piece of evidence was his mobile phone, which was confirmed to be his and had multiple communication texts with her, not necessarily stalkery, but very communication heavy with her, which would be true if you were in a relationship. One thing Mr. Sprett did fail to point out, perhaps would have been brought up in amendments, was that these texts were recent because they had broken up a month ago, and therefore the texts on there could have been deemed as not recent. They could have been from a month and a half ago. However, this wasn't specified, so I'm just leaving that up there in the air. On the left, we have the alleged lighter that the accused used to burn the barn down. Now, Mr. Sprett nor Miss Plays tried to bring up DNA evidence on this one, and therefore I went with what Mr. Sprett has said, and therefore this lighter did indeed belong to Mr. Moltres. Now, it's possible this could have been played off by the defence by pointing out that he's a very heavy smoky. You can tell by his skin, or perhaps he just likes to burn himself. However, it is alleged that this is the item that started the fire, and this was not counted in any way, shape, or form. So, considerations. Moving on to number three, we had a large selection of items. We had a knife and a pistol that belonged to... Somebody who wasn't in the original listings of the murder, as we only had 16 cows listed as the murder. However, apparently, Officer uh, 
What was his name? Kennedy. I remember the character. He was an arsehole. I was preferred to chill. Officer Kennedy, as I'm going to call him, <coughs> was in the barn at the time and killed. And those are his items. There are some cow meat on the pizza shown there. We have uh, police identification proving that the evidence came from the police department. And a photograph at the scene of a police officer handing... I, don't know, I think that was Leon's body holding the cow. So perhaps Leon was hiding underneath the cow. Or perhaps he was trampled to death by one of the cows as it was being burned alive. And you could see his skull there. And the cat girl who is absolutely mortified, which would imply that Mr. Leon and the cat girl were having some kind of horrific furry affair. Now, being a furry, this doesn't bother me, but it might bother some people in this room. Very interesting there, and a police officer just holding the cow. And the last pieces of evidence were a hat and a banana butt plug. Now, DNA testing was done on the banana pot plug, and it was proven to belong to the accused, and was found on the scene. This could have been explained away by the defence by pointing out that he works there, something that was established by the defence. So finding a banana butt plug isn't necessarily unreasonable, considering the mental stability of the accused. However, it's... Uh, well, it's just an interesting thing. The hat could also be considered a particularly not that interesting object, considering how the defence did say he worked there. The defence never counted that this particular object belonged to the accused or not, so we assume it's one of his hats. And that was roughly how I interpreted the defence's case. There were some interesting witness questions brought up. I forgot what they were, but they were very interesting, and I know what I need to know already. We now move over to the defence's case, which was made up of just the one screen here, but there was quite a lot on this screen to digest. So the first thing we'll address is the photographic evidence. This was the accused in a previous trial. I believe that Judge Dinosaur dealt with that one. He was moaning about how the client smelt rather burnt. He's a rather old codger, that bastard is. Uh, but he was in trial beforehand for a different case technically unrelated but he was in court on the right hand side we have a tape this tape was confirmed to be a recording of a rather unpleasant phone call between the accused and his now ex-girlfriend the cat girl where she made rather horrible allegations against him and he sort of just sat there like pussy which is absolutely fine men are allowed to be pussies there's nothing wrong with that whatsoever this was proven to be a true conversation between them at the time period of one month ago when their relationship ended. Underneath the screen you can see the just bottom half of a torch sticking out. Now obviously, if you forgive me, this is a stick grenade, but I do like the fact that you put it there and said it was a torch. That was actually very believable. So this torch is believed by the defence to be the item that caused the fire in the barn themselves and had somebody else's handprints on them. Now, how uh, the handprints of a torch that was assumably in a fire could still be found and tested is uh, believable, not believable, but the uh, prosecution did not question the legitimacy of this, which throws into doubt somewhat the actual cause of the fire. Although there are a few things in the defence's case I do need to bring up which are quite important. The defence did sort of play this framed aspect, but didn't do so until... Well, really, until it was a bit too late in the case as presented, and it wasn't massively believable. It's understandable, perhaps. Uh, they didn't get on very well with his old friend, Leon. He was a bit here and there. They also, the defence made one very major mistake, which was to claim, as the accused said, that there was nobody in the barn at the time, when the charge sheet that's presented at the beginning of the case literally said 16 cows were killed. Now, cows are people, and people are cows, and therefore there was somebody in the barn at the time, which does throw, again, the reliability of the accused testimony... The accused testimony into question. And it's all a bit here or there. So, I believe I've covered everything that I need to cover in the uh, judge's summary. Quite a short one compared to how they can go on. So, we shall now move on to the judgment. Mr. Moltres, would you please take a seat on the centre table? I have listened to the cases as presented by the lawyers, and they have been quite interesting. However, I must admit that I do find the defence's case a bit too sporadic, all over the place, and not necessarily believable. Although there are aspects of the prosecution's case that also don't make a huge amount of sense, the interlink between the two cases where things the defence have said have basically backed up what the prosecution has said. That he is technically stalking his ex-girlfriend, who you didn't know was the ex-girlfriend at the time, she is still in communication with him. They've been in a relationship. It makes it very believable. This man, who 
would be stalking her and would attempt to burn a barn down with her while she was with her new lover. Therefore, as pleased as I was with uh, Miss Play's presentation of her case in course, I'm afraid that I must find in good faith that the accused Mr. Moltres is guilty of arson, attempted murder on two degrees, and the slaughter of 16 livestock. Now, in arson and the livestock itself would only be a minor jail sentence, however, with the uh, charge of two attempts of murder, I must sentence Mr. Moltres to death by guillotine. Court dismiss. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the guillotine house. We have retrieved an ancient guillotine from France because they need how to make weapons. Uh, we are here today for the execution of the accused who has been found guilty of various crimes, despite the best efforts of their lawyers. Now, before we carry on, Mr. Moltres, do you have anything that you wish to say before your life ends? <laughs> the, the chaos reign. Let's go, Rain. Very Rest in well. Peace. Right. Well, in that case, time to begin. I'm gonna pray for you every night. They ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine when you're not really fine, but you just can't get into it because they would never understand. <laughs> Right, ladies and gentlemen, back to the courtroom. We can have a nice cup of coffee and talk about the case. <laughs> that was awesome. <laughs> Wait, take me instead. Is he? Is he? Is he? He's like really dead. We bad. killed him. He's dead. That's what. They, look, that's what happens is when you dead? lose. That's what happens when you lose a court case. That's what happens when you lose a court case. Your head gets chopped <laughs> off, or when the, when the last one got shot. You have to die in the court case if you lose. Well, it depends I'm disappointed. On the of the I don't see the blood Normally, flying yes, everywhere. 